this should work. Oh, okay, it's recording. Um, so, can you tell us about like your history with Mount Pleasant, like growing up there, how it was? Sure. Um, it's actually a family community when I was growing up there. Mm. So this is, I was born in 71, so um, I went to attend the school in the area. So at the time, my father's family, the Bird family, owned the majority of the houses on that street. So it was really cool because it was all my family and cousins, and we used to do a lot of um, bicycle runs and marathons and just family-oriented stuff. Always did big family barbecues and just go from house to house. Um, the strange thing is where I grew up, the property um, divides the township. Mm -hmm. So my best friend lived next door to the right, and one of my favorite cousins lived across the street. And because the majority of my mom's property was on Tredifferin, I went to the TE school district, and the other half is on Upper Marion, so my cousin and my best friend went to Upper Marion, so we never got to go to school together, even though we were right next door and across the street from each other. But as far as the history of the community, like I said, it's very family, was very, very family-oriented, and it was just really cool to live in a community where everyone was family that owned your property. I think it's like changed since you were younger. Oh yeah, it's a big difference now. A lot of the property um, is rented to college students, so there's a ton of houses on the street now that I don't know who they are, and they change because as you know, semester to semester, year to year, as soon as you get to know the students, there's someone else that comes in. So a lot of, I don't know what percentage, but a lot of the homes now are rented out. And a lot of the older family members that I talked about have passed on and, mm -hmm the houses were left to their kids and then they didn't want the house or they moved on. So now it's a totally different community. There's probably only maybe three or four houses now that are people I know. Mm. And the rest of them, like I said, are college kids or runners. So how do you feel about like the college kids living where you grew up? I don't mind that they live there. I just miss the family community that it used to be. I think it's cool that we're that close to that many universities that that can be an option. Mm -hmm. But um, there's a there's times, especially in the summertime, where there's a lot of partying and a lot of traffic, and you pull up to the house and you can't find parking on the street because the kids are there and they're loud and disruptive. But that's people forget. We all been in college, so we kind of know that's you know to be expected. But it's totally different than what I'm used to. And I have nieces and nephews and my daughter, so before I wouldn't mind them out riding their bikes up and down the street because I knew the people, and now I don't. So you have to be careful. You know, there's college guys walking yeah. back and forth, and my daughter's 14, so, mm -hmm. you know, when she wants to go up to the park before, it wouldn't be a big deal. And now I'm like, well, you know, I don't know, go with someone or let, text me when you're there, or I'll ride up and check on her. So it definitely has changed over the years. Do you have a um, favorite like, memory? Um, living in Mount Pleasant when you were younger besides like the spending time with like all your family? My favorite memory just in Mount Pleasant. I think it ties back to that. Um, just remember the holidays were always really big and because there's so many of us on that street we would like go house to house and like someone would host you know like appetizers and we would go there and then you go to another house for the ending part of the party or just could just walk up and down the street and have so many of us cousins. So I just remember just having that family knit community, which was really, really awesome. And just so many cousins. So you always got to spend time with them. And everyone's house, you go walk in and out of everyone's house. There was one main house where my great grandfather lived, and that was where most of the people would just gather. So you felt really comfortable going there, sitting on the porch. It was always something going on. And everyone would feed you, no matter what house you would go to. It was just really cool. So. Um, the memories I really remember and just feeling safe just feeling like I go to and fro like I don't feel like that's the case now mm. so do you feel like the biggest factor that changed Mount Pleasant was the safety net that was there was is not there anymore the safety's not there as much as just from not knowing who's coming in and out of the houses like I said it's one thing if your neighbor would stay your neighbor you could get to know them and feel comfortable but because they're forever changing they just um, built two houses well it's actually to me, it looks like a twin, but they made two townhouses right across oh, the street from mom. Yeah. yeah, they actually just found that both of them are sold. So you know, which is cool. And that way, whoever bought those homes will be hopefully permanent residents, so we can get to know them. But when the majority of your houses, like I said, are rented out to college kids, that's forever changing. Or I think sometimes they rent out to other friends. So who the owner thinks is there is a lot more people. Um, but we're getting to know the college kids that are right next to my father. Matter of fact, my dad barbecued yesterday and gave him some food. And I go, oh, we want 
to pay you to cook for us and all that. So, but they'll change because they won't be yeah. the same kids. You know, you guys get out in a few weeks, so then they'll go home and someone else will be in the house. So I'm not saying it's unsafe. It's just not knowing. So whereas before it was more secure because you knew who you were dealing with. Um, what do you think makes it like Mount Pleasant so special? Um, as like a community as a whole, the history behind the um, just the history that you guys probably learned about Mount Pleasant. Um, Maisie B. Hall. I don't know if you guys learned about her. Mm -hmm. um, she was over a hundred when she passed away. So you have some elderly people that really cared about the community. We still try to keep it going. There's um, a chapel at the top of um, Henry Avenue. I don't know if you guys saw that on your tour. And we kind of keep that in the community is open up for tutoring for kids and just trying to keep that kind of history there. But I think that's so special. And like I said, I've said it a thousand times, but the family <laughs> and the um, community is really huge. It's really a special place. What is like one thing you want everyone to remember? Like if Mount Pleasant does end up changing more and more, what is one thing that you want them like to remember always about Mount Pleasant? Like, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, it does make sense. I think the biggest thing is for, not, for how long it's been in existence, how it has changed, how the, my grandfather, the Bird um, family, really kind of, he brought property for all his kids, which I thought was just amazing. He was an entrepreneur at such way back then where opportunities weren't even given to us that he had that mindset. Mm -hmm. And then to teach and instill into his family that has trickled down to all of us to be homeowners to so buy that house and display that, and that's how kind of Mount Pleasant kind of originated was just from families owning homes, which happened to be all the, basically the same family. Mm -hmm. So that is just important, and that's the history of the who owned the homes. And we were actually talking to a guy today that rode down the street who was asking about property, and the house he was looking at was my, one of my uncles who passed away years ago. But people are still interested in these older homes, and you know they're not, they don't make homes like they do. Um, back in the day, but I just think it's so important to remember that it was a community, a tight-knit community um, in those family, which I think is unusual. There's mm -hmm. a lot of community and development you see, but they're, no one knows each other or they're not related. So I think that was really special, and I just remember that as a kid, like, wow, this is really cool that every house I walk by is like one of my uncles or aunts or cousins, and just felt comfortable. Do you think that it ever could go back to the way it was? I don't. I really don't. I think a lot of our kids, like even my daughter, she's ready to go to college and be a pediatrician and travel the world. So I think it's just a new generation, whereas back then everyone kind of wanted to stay in the same area. If you went to college, you stayed local. So I don't think that will happen. I think a lot more um, people are buying homes to rent them out. And I don't think our family, the older kids or the, young, well, the younger kids are buying property back in Mount Pleasant. So I don't think so. <laughs> Would you want Mount Pleasant to be preserved, like as a more family-based, like suburban unit, or do you think you would want it to see me more progressive, like more gentrified and more like kind of like King of Prussia? It has I would like it to be preserved. I really would. I so yeah. you, we live so close to King of Prussia, those areas where you can get that, yeah. or to have that um, safe knit, that really fun. We used to, like I said, we used to decorate bikes and go up and down the street. Like you could just block the street off because everyone agreed. Like now you would have to get so many people involved to do things like that, the township and everything. Um, we had that church at the top of the street, which the majority of the family went to. So it was just really cool that everything was right in the area. So I would love that. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we're so close to King of Prussia, Philadelphia and all those areas mm -hmm. where you can get that other lifestyle that to have a community that's still like that would be really awesome. Do you wish that your kids got to experience what you did? Yes. The, only, the good thing is, because my mom is there and my sister is there and I still have you know some family members, that we spend a lot of time out there now, so she gets a small piece of it. Mm -hmm. But no, like all my uncles and stuff that I refer to are all deceased, so she's never had an opportunity to meet them. Uh, and she knows a couple cousins up the street, but she doesn't know the family which is shame on me, but they're not around. There's just not that same opportunity like it used to be used to have family reunions and stuff on the street. So she gets a small piece of it, but nowhere near what I experienced. So it would be really cool if she would experience it, but unfortunately things change. <laughs> Do you think um, like kids, especially like ch children your daughter's age, 
would benefit more from like neighborhoods that, like Mount Pleasant or benefit more from like places like Philadelphia or like bigger cities or more like you know close to suburban depends what you mean from benefit so to me mm -hmm. family and community is huge to me so mm -hmm. that would be huge but then from the social aspect and getting to know culture and other opportunities definitely Philadelphia is definitely a place for that so I think there would need to be a balance mm -hmm. but to have that safe knit community I think is important but you got to get kind of outside of Mount Pleasant we were kind of sheltered as well because there was there wasn't buses and shuttles and stuff when I was growing up so you were kind of if you didn't drive you were stuck to the Mount Pleasant area so it was always nice to get out and when I finally started driving to go to King Impression in Philadelphia it was like oh there's a whole world outside of Mount Pleasant which is really cool so I think you have to both is important Mm -hmm. So hopefully going away to college will give her that experience um, as well. You don't live in Mount Pleasant now, do you? Correct. So is it different now, like living in a more, like a neighborhood where people aren't as close? Is that like it hard is for different. you to like adjust to it's that funny. kind of lifestyle? Mm -hmm. It is different. It's your typical community. I know my neighbors, but that's basically it. We spend a lot of time still in Mount Pleasant. Matter of fact, on my way here, my daughter's like, drop me off in Mount Pleasant on your way to the, you know, everyone wants to come, still come to my mom's house and hang out. So even when she was a child, we got a swing set and the trampoline, you get all that stuff. We put everything in my mom's yard because we spend more time there still than we do at our own home. So um, enjoy that part of it. Plus, I knew if my sisters had kids, we would all end up there. So I put all that in my yard and her <laughs> kid, their kids could benefit. So that's still the place that we always come to and that's because my mom always kind of stayed there and mm -hmm. made the nice. home bigger and open up to all of us. We do family dinner. I know it's more about Mount Pleasant than my family, but we're Sunday dinners are a big tradition yeah. that we do every Sunday. So all the kids and my two sisters are always there and their spouses. So. That's nice. It's, it's awesome because yeah. I don't have to cook <laughs> I don't like to cook. <laughs> Um, so you kept saying like how the Burge family basically is very deeply infused into like the history of Mount Pleasant mm -hmm. and like now you're saying that they're getting older and they're leaving. Do you think like when the last bird is like, you know, the last one to leave from that neighborhood, even though there are a lot of them there, do you think that when they start like leaving more and more, the neighborhood itself isn't going to have like, isn't going to be as preserved as it is now? Like your mom is pretty much the one like we know mm -hmm. is holding the neighborhood down, making sure we're still knowing about the history and importance of where, you know, Mount Pleasant came from and your grandfather and stuff like that. But do you think like when these older generations, you know, move on, don't live in Mount Pleasant anymore, do you think that the neighborhood's going to be lost? I don't know. There's others besides my mom that do a good job of that. Like once, mm -hmm. like you said, the last group is gone, it's a possibility, but they're doing a great job across the street from my mom's a little further down. There's a Maisie B. Hall um, memorial area where it's a garden and stuff. So they're trying to put the history there at the top of the street where the church is behind the, um, the church. That park is a Maisie B. Hall with um, like named after her, which is a big part of Mount Pleasant. So there's history posted there. Mm -hmm. I think this class is awesome because now the history is like in the library and access to other people from previous classes. And I guess your information will be added as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think there's always going to be a, a piece there. Uh, it's kind of up to us, you know, to pass it down to our kids and so on. Um, and there's a the few houses that are still family houses. I think will always stay the ones that you know have passed away and their kids let it go. But there's a few that are still family that I know are going to stay in the house. Like my mom made it very clear, like mm -hmm. when she passes away, we're not to sell the house. This is you know. So I think there's a couple families that are like that. Mm -hmm still on the streets. I think we'll always have a piece of it. Will it diminish a little bit? Yes. But I still think there's always going to be that history that's there. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think that was pretty good. Yeah, I think that was pretty good. good. Do you have anything else to say about Mount Tell me what you're going to do. You don't have to be on camera, but just in general what your um, assignment is. I guess it's